It's a name people born in Cuba might not even know, Antonio Aponte. He led a rebellion of enslaved people on the island more than 200 years ago. And what makes his story even more remarkable is that he is believed to have created artwork about the uprising before it happened. That artwork was lost, but our guests are reimagining it for a new exhibit. Ada Ferrer is a historian with New York University, which is hosting the program, and Edouard duval is an artist and curator. Welcome to you both. So, Ada, as the historian on the project, let's begin. Who was Antonio Aponte? Well, Jose Antonio Aponte was a free man of color, a free black man in, born in Havana, and he was a carpenter, an artisan. Many of the artisans in Havana in this period were black men. and. He was also a member of the colonial militia. He was a reader. He was a creator. He was a thinker. And he led a movement against slavery with other free men of color and with enslaved people. An uprising, essentially. An, an uprising, a conspiracy. And they rose up. They were captured uh, after the third plantation. But it was a much bigger conspiracy overall. They wanted to end slavery in all of Cuba. There were links possibly to eastern Cuba. Some say there were links to San Santo Domingo and to Haiti, some even to Brazil. So he had an expansive vision, but it was defeated before it could really get started. Edwell, tell us about what was in the book that he created, which sounds like an extraordinary work. It's an uh, extraordinary story. I read uh, uh, Ada's book on the reactions of the Spanish de territories in the Caribbean to the Haitian Revolution, and the chapter was devoted to uh, uh, Antonio Aponte. And uh, the book has been lost, but there were the transcripts of the trial, because that's what really got started the whole situation with him. That when they found, I mean, they would have executed him immediately. But mm -hmm. when they went to his house, they found a book, a book of paintings, and the, cu the authorities were so curious that they really wanted to know what was in that book. And it's through the transcripts of that those descriptions because they went page to page to page, you know, like describing every inch of the images. So when I read that, I found that so extraordinary uh, that I had to meet her. <laughs> I had to meet Ada. So we just. I I called her and she was saying, I've been looking for this book. At one point I said, Ada, you know what, let's redo the book. <laughs> 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 because there's enough material with these transcripts to I imagine what, you know, like what he was trying to say, what he was trying to, con I mean, conceive. And really what he was, the book was meant for the King of Spain. It was like a, like a letter or a, a, a document to be sent to the King of Spain to explain to the King of Spain who his subjects were, that they had a history, that they were people of dignity, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, um, that's, so it's literally a history of the black world. So, Ada, what, what did these paintings depict? What were these works of art? They, the, first, the first painting was a picture of the creation of Earth. So it's Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. But from in black, yes. from the black perspective. Yes. And then there are pictures of Havana. There are pictures of fortresses, of landmarks in Havana. There are pictures of his own grandfather, who was also a colonial militiaman fighting uh, in defending Havana against foreign powers. Importantly, there were many images of Ethiopia. There were images. A place he had never been to. He had never. He had never been to. There were pictures of Egypt. Uh, there were pictures of Rome, of Spain, of the heavens. There were a lot of astrological. So these are, are images that he imagined and labeled them as this is Ethiopia or this yes. is this is my Rome. This is Rome as I see it. Yes. He also read. So he had a library of books in his house with twelve books, and he had several histories of Ethiopia. Two, I, I believe, two histories of Ethiopia, a history of Rome, a guide to Havana. So he read widely, and talked to people, and he had heard about Rome from two Cuban priests who went and saw black men saying the mass in, you know, priests, black priests delivering the mass in Rome. So he depicted that in his book. We talked briefly about how he was using these, these images in his rebellion. How did he do that? 
Well, they were also, they, he was concocting, I mean, uh, for example, uh, making reference to the Haitian Revolution. He was showing generals, you know, like in battle with white uh, forces. So I think that they represent an image of black sovereignty. It's in an age, he's, he's creating this right after the Haitian Revolution is And successful. the pictures that you have, you have made now, that your exhibit is made of, what do they represent? What do they represent? Well, we invited about 12 artists. There's, there's four, 14, 14, 14 now artists, one, yeah. and each one. Some of them really went to great lengths to try to conceive what Abonte did. Others just, you know, like made homage to him. So it's a variety of things. For example, yeah. mine are very. Fi I mean, I try to illustrate one or two of these paintings that they talk about in this transcript. I had to do four to try to co to encapsulate all that was said about those paintings. In you know, I just couldn't conceive of putting all of this information in on one plate because I mean they were very very complex. So these fourteen different artists that you went to, you said to them, did you ask them, is there something in particular that speaks to you that you want yes. to represent? So everyone did it a little differently. We made the scholarship available to them and the transcript of the trial, and then they would just call and we'd talk to them. And so, for example, uh, Teresita Fernandez, who's a Cuban-American artist who does a lot of landscape work, and she does very big, kind of large conceptual art. She likes working, she was working with gold, she was interested in his vision of the cosmos, because there's the cosmos are all over the book. So she did something that's much more abstract, more conceptual, but right. she tied it to one of the images where he talks about Vulcan and Jupiter, and one of them being on a mountaintop and sending rays of gold to his father. And so she kind of, she was drawn to that and did something with that. I know that you want to travel this exhibit. Yeah. We've got a little bit of time, just a very short amount of time. Yeah. Where are you taking the exhibit? Well, it was in Miami, now it's in New York. Next it goes to Duke University. We've had interest from universities across the country, also from Havana, Santiago de Cuba, And I'm Haiti. definitely taking it to Haiti. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's the most important thing people can take away with, from, uh, away from with them? That he was someone who was an artist and a revolutionary. To think about the future, you got to be creative and be imaginative. Thank you so much for coming in to talk with us.